Hello, everybody, and welcome to board Indiana basketball after the game today with Joe Hillman, 1987 national champion. Joe, how are you, sir? Well, a bit better, but uh, loaded question. A tough one there. Yeah, it was so tough because uh, I gave Indiana little to no chance in this game, and they hung around and hung around, and they hung around again in ways that I was surprising because Trace Jackson Davis was non-existent in the first half. Race Thompson was working hard, um, but then all the, Trace Jackson Davis comes on a little bit in the second half, uh, and they never got out of, away from Purdue. They were Purdue was in danger the whole time. Well, yeah, I mean, Trace Jackson Davis acted like he didn't want to be there in the first half. Um, I, him getting blocked or whatever in the first play of the game, the first possession, I, I mean, I, I mean, he was done. I mean, you could just tell in his body language he didn't want to be there. But then second half, it's amazing what happens when you um, have Davis and Cop making shots and Thompson and, and Johnson. I mean, they, they hung in there. They made – they really – Offensively, they made a change where they started doing a double high pick and roll, and they had some motion. In the last four minutes, they went back to their stagnant high pick and roll, three guys stand, and Johnson didn't make very many good decisions. Um, I feel bad for the kid because he's really played hard and played well the last four games. Uh, he's a competitor. He's got a lot of fight in him, one of the few guys that looks like he's got some fight in him. But he had three turnovers in a bad shot in the last four minutes and they're not going to win when your point guard has that situation Miller caught making some shots today something that has been a very inconsistent part of Indiana's game but to me this shows was a, exactly what this team could have been how they could have consistently gotten contributions from either a Miller cop or somebody else each night along the way because that's usually how it works they just didn't get that today they did and it filled in greatly because Xavier Johnson was playing well early on and it, and it took the place of not having Trace Jackson Davis having a game race Thompson played well but then they took him away in the second half yeah, and he picked up that third foul early on, Ray Thompson did in the second half. That kind of killed a little bit of his momentum. Even the first half, he got that second foul, and they took him out, and he really started off well. Um, I mean, this game came down to in the second half, Miller caught making shots and Trace Jackson Davis getting involved offensively. But Purdue was not very good today. I, I, Purdue fell in love with the three-point shot early on um, when they got a decisive inside game. And, and it's going to hurt Purdue if, uh, if they want to keep jacking up threes like they, they – again, they fell in love with the three-point shot today instead of going inside. Now, when they get to the tournament, I thought Robbie Hummel made a really good comment about the Big Ten's got a lot of good, big – front lines and Purdue's going to match up against a, you know somebody that's not going to be able to match up with Edie or Williams but Ivy didn't play good today Ivy looked like a normal player out there today he he, he just wasn't in, involved Stefanovic was the guy that really kind of carried Purdue and Hunter Hunter struggled early in the second half when IU made their run, but then Hunter was the main guy in the last four minutes. Take the guard play in the last four minutes and produce guards outplayed IU's guards. I mean, that's the bottom line. They got shots. They got drives to the basket. IU got turnovers and some bad shots. Yeah, we. Uh, it was a pleasure. It was nice to see some shots go down for Indiana. Some poor decision making again by Parker Stewart uh, at various times today. Uh, sometimes you wonder where his head is, but uh, the shots weren't coming from him either. Uh, they did not get much uh, in, in, in the line of uh, from from Parker today. Yeah, and I'm gonna, grab, that, and I'm gonna grab my and I'm gonna grab my charger while you're talking. Yeah, and he, um, you know, they set up that nice lob bounce play again for him. Got the same look that they got in the Rutgers game. He just did knock it down. 
But I would really like to see IU play with more of Xavier Johnson and Rob Finnessy on the court at the same time. Um, I, I don't know why that's not – you're not too small in college basketball anymore to play with those two guards. They, they both are good defenders, and there's a rhythm that gets going in the game, it seems to me, when – Rob Finnessy and, and Johnson are both in there handling the basketball. So, you know, some of those things that are just lineup stuff, and, and if Parker Stewart's not making shots and Miller Cops not making shots, I'm not sure why they're in the game over a Geronimo or a Bates. Um, but again, we're not I'm not a practice every day, so I don't see what the Geronimos and the Bates give us. But again, a, a game like today again is where you miss uh, a guy's energy of Galloway and Galloway can affect the game without scoring. And that's, that's where he really has to look at his role going forward and, and be a guy that says, okay, I, every opportunity I score is going to be an energy play, not a shot. Kind of a um, I just, I just like what IU is doing offensively more in the second half when they were running that, that double high post screen with some down screens and, there was movement. There was actual motion going on instead of that stagnant, high pick and roll, three guys stand. And and Jackson Davis is just not going to be effective against Edie. Just back to the basket, post him up. He's not going to get shots off. Uh, he's not a good enough player with his back to the basket to create offense. Now where he's really effective is get the ball, put it on the floor, having some, some space to move towards the basket. Uh, you know, and that and how you change stuffs up. I, I you know, give credit to Woody that, that he made some changes to start of the second half. Last four minutes, so they went back to that that offense that just doesn't seem to get things done in the last four minutes of games. I, I wonder. I, I don't think that these guys are checked out uh, because as ah, much no, as, no way. As much as I didn't think. They did after the Rutgers game. I, I I didn't expect them to win this game. I, I, hell, I didn't expect it to be close. And so what they did today was a little more surprising to me. I think that they just need to to win. And I saw someone else say this too, but uh, I've been saying I, I think two games in the Big Ten will get them into the tournament. But that second game is not going to be easy because it's going to be against someone like either Michigan well, it's going to be against Wisconsin. Or, yeah, who they should have I mean, beaten they, twice already. Well, right, exactly. So why can't IU go in and win two games? I mean, there there's no reason why they can't go beat Michigan. I, I mean, now Michigan's a not a great matchup for them because of Dickerson. He's a big guy. He, he handles Jackson Davis okay. Um, now Michigan made every shot imaginable at Assembly Hall, which is which is very unusual in that one game that they played after IU beat Purdue, but there's no reason why Indiana can't beat Michigan and then turn around with a pro Indiana crowd, I would think, and go beat Wisconsin on whatever it's going to be, Thursday or Friday morning. Um, you know, again, it, Indiana's whole season here in the Big Ten has come down to the last four minutes of games, and they have not executed. They just haven't. There hasn't been one game – Maybe the Purdue game at home where they executed and got things done in the last four minutes of games because it's been it, – it, it just – the execution, the shot making, the decision making has cost them numerous times in these in these end of game situations. This is, a, is an issue that bothers me. The, the inability to execute down the last few minutes of a game and – we saw it again today. I don't know what the hell that that last that that shot. I, I don't know if he was just trying to draw a foul, but it just looked really awkward with probably another half second uh, of dribble time that could have oh, been. Oh, he had way more than a half a second. I mean, the, when he when he tried to create that, there was three seconds left. And and again, that's just a situation. Got another time. I think he was trying to draw a foul. I don't think there's any doubt about it. But uh, I'll give Hunter, I'll give Hunter a lot of credit. When you get in those late game situations, if you can just make a guy that's roaring up the floor turn, you know now, now that guy's got a spin dribble, and, and and that's what Hunter did. And you know I saw Woody at the end was arguing, and with the there's no chance that was a foul. I mean he did not foul uh, 
Xavier Johnson at all. He didn't come close to fouling him. It was just a really just smart play by Hunter and maybe a, a little bit of a Johnson just wanting to try to get a shot up and not knowing he had a little more time. Uh, this team now goes forward into the Big Ten tournament with their NCAA tournament hopes pinned to what they do there. Uh, and we've seen them play as with the best teams in the conference. We just saw them today with Purdue, uh, wh whomever it's been, Wisconsin, for God's sakes. They should have beat the, the Big Ten champion both times. So we, we know that they can play with those teams, but what is it going to take for this team to, and I hate to use Woody's phrase, but get over this hump of not making these critical mental meltdowns at the end of games that cost you well i mean they need they need some success i mean that, and that's you know what I, I think the biggest thing going to the big 10 tournament is they got to have some toughness again xavier johnson and fantasy they, they got some mental toughness they compete they battle trace jackson davis in the first half did not look like he wanted to be there he didn't compete miller cop and parker stewart didn't compete early on i mean you can't go up into Mackey. You got to be the dog. You got to be the fighter. You got to take it, or you're going to get. You're just going to get hit. And they got punched in the mouth. Now they did come back, and they and they responded. And Jackson Davis and Cop, they played really well in the second half, and and got to give them some credit for that. Now going into the Big Ten tournament, though, it's going to be their whole mind frame. Are they thinking that they had to win today to get in? And now, woe is me, if we don't win at all, we're not going anywhere? Or is it, hey, look, we go beat Michigan. Look, we can go beat Wisconsin. Boom, now we got another one. I mean, potentially they could win three games. They, I mean, they could get on a run here, and, and that's the mindset that they have to have. Now, if they, if, again, I go back, if it's woe is me, they're going to beat against Michigan. But if they have the mindset of, look, Somebody's going to have to play really well to beat us. I remember when I was a senior, I used to just say to guys, let's just play our best, and if somebody beats our best, we're going to be okay with that. Because when we play well, we're really hard to beat. But it, but we didn't have a very – we had a low margin of error because if we didn't play very well, we weren't very good. Um, we weren't like the 87 team that had a bunch of guys and, and we could you know, overcome not playing well. But that's what this team needs to do because if they play well and they've done it for so many stretches in these games, they're tough. The problem is they always have 10 minutes during games where they're not very good. And and I, it's frustrating. It's got to be frustrating for a coach. Um, you know, you draw up plays and you get guys wide open shots. I mean, is that the coach? Well, I don't know. The coach is drawn up creating plays to get shots. You know, I heard one of my buddies said, why would Woody call his last time out today with four minutes and 45 seconds to go? Well, I thought that was a pretty good time out, even though it was your last one. That was the game right there. Purdue was on a run. They had to slam that momentum down. And the way college basketball is getting completely ruined. College basketball is getting ruined by going to the review. Every single play is reviewed in the last two minutes, and it's disgusting. There's Why do you have to go review every out-of-bounds play? And if you're going to do that, Indiana needs to be penalized for not having timeouts. So if you're a coach, you know there's going to be reviews in the last two minutes. Use your timeouts. Who cares? You're going to get a bunch of free ones. Prior to Indiana Purdue coming on, if people were out there watching, waiting for the game to come on ESPN, the Tennessee-Arkansas game had a five-minute review going to the monitor on an out-of-bounds play. I mean, it's ridiculous. It, th these rules at the end of games is ruining college basketball. Nobody wants – why do you want to watch the last two minutes? It's ridiculous. It's terrible, Jim. It's just – and so that's what I said to my buddy. I said, who cares? You're going to get a bunch – you're going to get two or three timeouts in the last two minutes. So – you know, I hate to rant and rave about the, the, the nature of the NCAA basketball because I think it's going downhill, but IU still has a chance to win a couple games here, and it's going to be their their attitude going into the Big Ten tournament. Um, and and, and it, it's almost like if they make one of these big shots that 
boom, they are going to get over the hump and they can carry them a long way. They just need they need some positive reinforcement at ends of game that they execute instead of losing one of these. And I thought maybe with Rob Fennessy making that shot against Purdue that it was going to carry over and they, they ruined that the next game. So we'll see. I mean, the way Xavier, the way Xavier Johnson's been playing, <laughs> I mean – He's he's been really really good the last four games. I mean that, I mean he, today again he had 18, 18 points, twelve assists. But his decision making at the end, they got to clean that up. They, he, I mean, he threw he, he had two two kind of bad turnovers where he just threw the ball up and threw it away. Um, and then the last play, you know, it's kind of a scramble play. I'm not going to get too you know critical on that. You're just trying to make a play. Do a quick reset. Don't forget, we're brought to you by our good friends from Endeavor Hospitality. That includes the fine folks at Southern Stone Restaurant, where you can find inside Indiana basketball Monday night, 705 with Don Fisher and Mike Whitson. Also, Feast Market and Cellar, great wines and cheeses. Uh, BB's Market, Butchers and Bakers, a former wagon wheel here in uh, Bloomington and Cabello. I can't wait. I hope I can go there and eat tonight. The courtroom down in Bedford as well. Uh, all great places to go, and make sure you get your Wow Club card from uh, whatever app you use, from the whatever store you use. It's there, just Wow Club card. And also, don't forget about our good friend uh, Joe Hillman. I don't think I have yours in the larger size, but uh, tell them about what you do for everybody as well. Well, yeah, I, uh, I me and my partner own a company called Trustwell Strategies, and we do financial planning, financial advising, and uh, retirement income strategies. So when times like we're going on now in the market, we're making sure that uh, people emotionally aren't worried about running out of money. So give us a call if you need any help with uh, what you're doing on planning for retirement or retirement on to death and leaving a legacy. And that email, I should have had that up there, but what's your uh, email? My email is jhillman.com. At twealth.com, T W E A L T H.com. There you go. Don't forget that. Uh, we've got more to come back on Monday uh, when we'll be back with Indiana Sports Speed Radio to start talking about the Big Ten tournament, uh, the buys, the draws, who gets what. We've got the women playing today as well, but uh, it's, it's a whole new season starting on Monday, Joe. And I know that, especially for teams that have had not the ending to the season that they wanted. This is, this is, can be new life, man. Oh yeah. And I, and I, I've never been a big fan of the conference tournaments. Um, only because I, I, I like the deal when you played everybody twice and you went through the gauntlet and after those 18 games, you had your conference tournament or you had your conference champion. Um, what's more important, the regular season or the postseason? I mean, I just think in these big conferences, it's for teams like Indiana. They got to play to get in over the hump. And, you know, I mean, Indiana, if you look at the game today, they shot a better percentage than Purdue. They shot a better percentage. They went 10 for 10 from the line. Uh, they out rebounded Purdue and more assists, had less turnovers, and they lose, but they were 5 for 20 from the three point line. And it's so easy to fall in love with three-point shots. It's just I, – I, I would just love to see Indiana get the ball going, shot big, going to the basket, trying to make some plays when you're not making threes. There's there's other things that you can do to – like I'll just give you an example. We, we kind of were getting on a little bit of a run the second half. We had two really poor possessions back-to-back. Took a bad shot. Um, I think Johnson took a bad shot, and then Race Thompson takes a three from the from the corner right in front of the bench. And it's just like, okay, why we don't we don't need that? He took you know, four three just, point shots today, and I don't understand yeah, the need yeah. for him to be taking four of them. Well, and Xavier Johnson was over four, and I get it. Sometimes he's got to got to take some shots, but he's not a he he's he's so effective with the basketball and. And he's really good at going to the basket because um, he's a tough kind of guard. I mean, he's hard to guard, but we, we just fall in love with if you're open, you shoot a three. Uh, you know, Michael Thorne took a three in the uh, first half or in the second half when we were kind of making a run. It's like, why? Why are you shooting that? Um, and those are decisions that 
that has to be hammered into guys is look just because you're open doesn't mean you have to shoot a three we can get that anytime we want go to the basket shot big get draw i mean purdue had three fouls the whole second half and they just got the hack at the end to to really take away things from indiana um the, because we're easy to guard you know you got to be hard to guard um and a lot of that is just activity and motion in your offense purdue you know purdue same type of deal they they, they made some plays down the stretch where they had a lot of good movement a lot of good cuts they missed a couple of layups from just really nice cuts through the down the middle and it, being hard to guard creates so much trouble for the defense and you put pressure on the defense by active movement screening making guys make decisions and and you know how many times you're watching indiana they they just exchange if you're getting an exchange set a screen and be hard to guard off of it so you know i mean I, when, when you're not making threes especially on the road get to the basket as much as you can get to the foul line um and and, and that i i would tell you like a Miller cop, for example, when you're struggling shooting, if you can get to the free throw line and knock down a couple of free throws, it, it does wonders for your confidence to know, okay, hey, I'm going to make a shot here. So I, I would just like to see Indiana get more inside the, the three point line and not fall in love with it. Uh, I know we've talked about X enough here, but this is a, a pretty big stat. 12 assists on two, two turnovers yeah. in the day. That's three yeah, less good. assists than the entire Purdue team had. Uh, yeah, no, he 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 was good today. Again, he oh, he's been good. He's been. I mean, <laughs> that guy keeps playing that way and shores up some of the decision making in the last three or four minutes. Um, you know, I mean, he what's he gone? 24, 24, 18. Today he has eighteen and twelve. I mean, he's been tough. And, and I'll tell you what, he's a competitive kid. That kid does not want to lose. Um, and you know, if everybody had his competitiveness, I, you would not be, uh, nine, nine, 11 in the big 10. I don't think, um, nope. he, he, you know, he, he does make some mistakes or whatever. Um, you know, sometimes he takes a bad shot sometimes, but I, I, the kid battles and it, it, if he gave, if everybody gave the same effort he's given with the same tenacity, I, you'd be a better team. Yep, I agree with you a thousand percent. We'll see if they can turn that around as they head up to Indianapolis. Fortunately, they don't have to go far for the Big Ten tournament as that will be uh, coming to us next week. We'll be up there for that as well. we'll Is it for sure that they're playing Michigan? Do we know that? I mean, that was as of today. If Michigan is done playing, um, I know that they were in that group. They were all in that same group uh, record-wise, so they're all pretty close. Uh, I, probably not likely to change. Um, the teams above them were set. Well, so Michigan has another game to play. Do we know who they play tomorrow or today? Nope. They played Michigan State last. Um, I don't recall. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously if uh, – uh, so Indiana is – is they're either going to play Michigan State or Michigan. Now, that's what it's going to be. Um, I, well – I guess if they end in a tie, well, who knows? So we're playing Michigan State or Michigan on uh, Thursday. So, having lost to both of them, that uh, Indiana, uh, when they lost to Michigan, that was a whole different deal. That was an emo they 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 had been drained emotionally. That was right off the Purdue win. They just got beat by Michigan State because Michigan State, their only win I think in the last five games is against Indiana. They have they have yeah, that was at home. No, I, I, I don't know. I, that's an interesting call. I, I think I'd rather play Michigan State than Michigan. There we go. Michigan plays Ohio State, who is, I think, whoops, wrong one. Uh, so if they has, both win, I'm assuming, if they both win or both lose, the way they've got in the standing right now, Michigan State is, is listed ahead, so they must have some tiebreaker against that. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. I mean, it, it, it's they're not playing Rutgers because Rutgers can – well, like, yeah, I guess Rutgers could lose, but they're not They're not going to have – they'd have nine losses to Michigan, Michigan State. I guess if Rutgers loses and Michigan and Michigan State both win, you know, I, I don't know what all these tiebreakers are, so we'll see what happens. But it's not like they can't beat any of those three teams. 
Donna, we're not here to cheerlead. Sorry, that's uh, go, that's where you find it on Facebook. What? And what is somebody saying? You guys, we need to support IU players and coach. Otherwise, no one is going to listen to us. Uh, Joe Hillman. What are we not supporting? The Joe Hillman played on the 1987 national championship team for Bob Knight. I think he knows what he's talking about. So I, I, well, I, I, I leave that there. <laughs> I love that. That's crazy. Well, you know, for that guy, for that guy, if um, you know, I mean, we're, we're we're just telling it like it is. We, I mean, how, did we not prop up uh, Xavier Johnson? Did we not say Miller Cop and Trace Jackson Davis played really well in the second half? Yeah. I'm, okay. All right. Yeah, that guy, he, uh, he he's listening, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Brother, I cannot thank you enough, Joe, as we uh, head off to the Big Ten Tournament. Are you going to get to any games up there, Nicky? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what um, – uh, I definitely am not going Thursday, uh, potentially Friday. Depends. Uh, um, you know, I, have, I have no idea. I, I think they play at 1130 on Friday if they win, so that might be a little difficult. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, I, I, I like – I like watching them all on TV because there'll be a million games on Friday, and I love clicking back and forth and doing all that because this is a great time of the year for college basketball. There's no doubt about that. It is the funnest time of year, man. It is a blast, and uh, it's like just like having you on every time is always a blast. Thank you again. Make sure. Yeah, no problem. Out. All right, Joe Hillman joining us here on Indiana Sports Beat, brought to you by the great folks in Denver Hospitality. Make sure you stop by there and check that out as well. Uh, until Monday or until tomorrow. Yeah, it is Monday. I'm Jim Coyle. I will see you on the radio. All right, see you, Jim.